Hey everybody, I'm Grumpus. Thanks for tuning in to Grumpus on Fire. Well, I'm kind of excited today. Uh, if you watched our last video, I showed you how to build a stand to hold a rotisserie over the Lone Star Grill's open top firebox. So today we're going to put some meat on it, probably throw a chicken on there, something cheap in case we burn it up. But uh, let's build a fire and let's figure out what it's going to take to make this work. So stick around. So here's a few things we need to think about. Uh, we need to make sure that our heat is close enough to the spit, which is, I hope you can see, is right in here. It needs to be close enough to cook all the way to the center without burning the outside. We don't want it so far away that our meat just sits there and just warms all afternoon. We need to make sure we're cooking. So normally I think on a, a gas grill or a charcoal, it looks to me, I've looked into stores and, and tried to measure things, it looks like it's about uh, seven, eight inches from the coals. And uh, that seems a little close for what I'm trying to do. So we could move the grate, our cooking grate, or our charcoal grate up to, to this level. We can move it up to this level. Uh, I'm thinking I can probably manage a hotter fire easier than I can manage a cold fire. So I think what we're going to do is I'm going to leave my, leave my grate right where it is. I'm going to start it with charcoal like I normally do, put some wood on there, and we'll see how high the flames go. Uh, probably put a probe, a temperature probe up here somewhere so I can monitor what temperature the heat is right up underneath the, our chicken. And I can always uh, add some lump to get the heat up a little higher. I can add more charcoal, I can add some, uh, some more wood and try to manage it that way because I'm afraid if I get it too close to the chicken and I start getting flare up, it's gonna be hard to manage that flame actually coming up and, and touching the chicken. So that's what I'm gonna try. Uh, our plan B will be, if it looks like it's uh, not doing what we want to, I'll just take this grate, we'll just move it up a level or two, and adjust our heat that way. Uh, I'm a little concerned with flare-up. You know, chicken drips a lot of grease, so if we end up with a flare-up, uh, probably put a, uh, a pan or something right underneath it. I don't think that will affect the heat coming up around that pan and, and roasting that chicken up. So this is all our first run. Is it an experiment? Uh, I think I got a plan. So I encourage you all to stick around and let's see if I burn this chicken up or not. Now I don't know how hot that heat's going to be coming off that firebox all afternoon. So I'm going to try to pick my paint here on the end just a little bit. Then I'm going to put a reflective shield up here. It's just. Uh, I'll just fold this around here. Let that door hold it into place. I'm gonna come around here on the back side. And I'll just fold that around. I'm gonna leave a little air space. And maybe that will kind of insulate that a little bit. I've got a magnet. That's all steel on the back, so I don't worry about anything melting. And we'll just snap that right there and see if that will help protect that paint just a little bit. Well, we got us a seven and a quarter pound roasting chicken. So we cut this thing open, put this out of here. And I know you're all gonna fuss at me, but I like to rinse my poultry. And the reason why it's recommended you don't is because people making the recommendations don't think we're smart enough to not splash chicken juice from one end of our kitchen to the next. But I like to rinse it. And we're going to dry it out so that our oil will stick and then our rub will stick to the oil. Check inside, see if we got any goodies in there. Looks like we do not. So all I'm gonna do is trim up just a little bit of this loose fat. Everything else looks pretty good to me. 
trim this neck off just a little bit. Give me a paper towel so I can grab my seasoning. We're gonna go with something we all know and love, something reliable. I'm experimenting on the pit. I don't need to experiment with seasonings too. Uh, Uncle Steve's competition bird powder. Get you some. So I'm gonna take and just open this up, put a little bit down in the bird. Didn't take a lot. All right, we're going to try our best to get this bird balanced. I have not done this before. Well, I've, it's been years since I've done it. I think we'll start, we'll just get it started right in here. I'm going to tip it up and see if I can, if you can see that or not. I guess we're out of camera. I'm just going to balance it in my hand and let it drop down. And there we are. I tried to take these forks and I tried to split the backbone right here. And then I took and tried to run this tine straight up between the breast. Let these other two come in between at the thigh bone. So it looks like it's reasonably balanced. I mean, the only thing holding it is the is the hex on the rod. So I think we did pretty good. I mean, the the universal rotisserie came with the counterbalances, but in this case, I don't think we're going to need to use it. All right, let's see if we can get these wings tied up a little bit. I'll right, see what we need to do. We need to come back underneath it like that. Pull it up. Wrap that around there like that. Ahead of that joint. And then we'll come around it a couple times like this. I think that'll hold it. There goes it. Doesn't look like it's going to flop much. I think we'll do the same thing with the legs. Good and tight. And we'll come up over this tine right here. Pull this guy back in tight. Give that a couple wraps. And that should keep it from flopping. There we go. I think that'll be good. All right, we're going to put just a little bit of olive oil on this. Just enough to kind of get things to stick. I'm going to make sure everything gets a little bit, a little bit of coating. It's looking shiny with my clean hand. We'll go ahead and put the rest of our Uncle Steve's on it. You can tell I like this stuff. I don't have a whole lot left. I think we'll finish it up on this bird. Make sure we get plenty on that breast. And that's it. All right, I'm going to let this sit here about 10 minutes. I'm going to wash my hands up and go out and it's 10 to our fire. I've got some hickory chunks. I don't normally use chunks, but I'm gonna try it as a starter. And we'll see where we go from there. I may end up putting full splits on it. So right now, let's just see what this gives us. It'll be easier to build that fire up than it will be to cool it off. Please excuse the airplane, folks. If you've seen any of my other videos, you know that's to be expected. Is that gonna be too much? I don't know. You tell me. Hmm. I'm just going to let that burn down just for a few minutes. I've got the intake vent wide open. 
I also have the exhaust stacks wide open to uh, help with the draw a little bit while the fire starts. And we may end up closing those exhaust stacks if it looks like it's pulling too much heat away from our box. I don't think it will, but we'll just see. Right now, it looks like the flames are all the way up. That's why I was wondering if it's going to touch the bird or not. We'll give it five minutes. I'll be right back. Alright, our fire has died down a little bit. I think uh, we've got the flame under control. Let's go get our chicken, put it on, and see what happens. Let's put our chicken on. Slide that over there. I'll come up here. Put this in our motor. I'm going to slide our retainer on. There's our two washers. These are our bushings. Slide them up tight. And I'm going to pull the, pull the shaft out of the motor about eighth of an inch. Just enough to give us a little play. There we go. And let's turn this thing on and see what happens. Adjust our heat shield a little bit. Want that motor to get too hot. And girls and boys, I think we're in business. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to take a temperature probe. I'm going to lay it right here. Not directly under the bird, but close enough. So we'll see if we can monitor our temperatures close to the bird. I don't know if you can see that or not. I'm going to move it around. Maybe you can catch it without a glare. And uh, if we don't melt that probe, we'll be able to watch this. All right, so here we are after an hour. Uh, the temperature on the left, that's just the probe over the fire. Uh, ignore all the other numbers. I don't have any other probe plugged in for those. Been trying to maintain between uh, ideally 350 and 400. So I'm going to go drop uh, three more pieces of uh, chunks of that uh, hickory on and let's see what that brings us up to. Here's our chicken after an hour. Seems to be doing pretty well. It's not getting too dark too fast. Now I did end up closing the damper completely. Uh, we were getting way too much air in there. I mean our temperatures jumped up to 500 real quick. I also closed the stacks on the other end. Keep that draw down a little bit. I also spread our fire around a little bit so it wouldn't be so concentrated in one spot. And move this around a little bit. Yeah, we'll throw one here. We'll throw one here. Oh, sorry, I'm trying to do this and keep an eye on the camera. Let's, uh, let's leave that alone and see what three pieces does for us. Well, after 15 minutes, well, 16 now. Uh, we've been dancing between uh, 330 and 349. I think at this point I'm going to put a ring of regular charcoal around that fire because I'm afraid I'm going to lose my coals and I don't want to add no more wood because of the flare up of the flame. So I'm going to run a ring of charcoal around them and we'll see where that gets us. Uh, we'll be back in a little bit been having to play with the fire quite a bit uh, to keep it between 350 and 400. But, uh, that's where we're at right now. Uh, let me take you over and show you what, what we did on the fire. I completely abandoned the whole idea of putting more charcoal on it. Found me some smaller splits. Kind of corralled the uh, coals between two splits and that kind of helped uh, maintain the fire. As you can see down there, I've got the vent open about a half of an inch. And I ended up opening both stacks up, kind of bleed some of that heat off just a little bit. Uh, depending on how the wind is blowing, it's, uh, you know, it's dropping this fire up and making it go up and down probably 25 degrees. This is where we're at so far. Chicken's looking pretty good. Got a little bit of a split on that knee, but it's no biggie. I think we'll come back at the two and a half hour mark and stick a probe in it and see what temperatures we're reading. 
just past the two and a half hour mark. See the temps have been running between uh, gosh, 310 and 390. Uh, had to babysit this fire a lot more than I expected. But we're keeping it maintained and we haven't burnt no chicken up yet. Let's stop this here and check out the thighs. I don't know if you can see there or not, we're at 246. Check this other one. Hit a bone. Here we go. 264. And that's showing two, or 170, I'm sorry. 166 there. Where's that other spot that I had? Yeah, it's only 146, so we need, need to go a little bit longer. Let's roll that around and check out the breast. Here we go. Let's find the thickest spot. It's at uh, 160, 159. I don't poke too many holes in it. 157. Yeah, we got a ways to go. Man, look at them juices running out. I hate to see that. Not at this point in the game. Well, it's three and a half hours. I'll bet this chicken's done. All right, let's check these thighs. I think that's the old hole. You know what? I'm still showing 148. This is not finished. All right. All right, we're gonna crank the heat up, see if we can push this thing through in the next 30 minutes. Might as well. I'll go check this brass too while we're at it an old hole. Yeah, the breast is done. 172. The breast is done. Legs are done. Well, I'm showing 164 all the way in there. But I did hit it a cool spot. That's 157. We're going to give this another 30 minutes, folks. I'm going to throw some wood on there, crank this heat up, see if we can push it through in the next 30 minutes. Well, let's see how we're looking now. One sixty-nine, sixty-eight. There we go. Check deep. There's 171. That's good. Check here under the armpit. We're at 173. Looking good. Let's check that breast. One ninety. Boy, we sure shot overshot that. One eighty five. One sixty nine. Uh, maybe just right there on the bone. This chicken's finished. Let's pull it off and let it rest a minute. Boy, that looks pretty good. Looks pretty dark on camera. It is dark, but it's not as dark as the camera's making it look. I'm gonna cover this up for about 15 minutes. While we're waiting for our chicken to rest, uh, let's talk about the cook. The last uh, hour and a half, I just kept pouring the charcoal to the pile and really got the heat cranked up to get this thing to finish. Uh, believe it or not, it went six hours. 
So I just now pulled it. It's temping nice. It doesn't seem to be overcooked. Uh, what have I learned? Well, I think the fire management is an issue for me. Uh, I think what I've learned is I've got a, I put a temperature probe uh, down inside the box, uh, right down in here, which I think was probably giving me a good reading, but the bird being above the box, I think we're losing a lot of heat due to breezes and things like that. So my main focus was on heat rising and trying to heat flame and overcooking the bird on the outside before the inside got finished. Uh, I think in the future I need to raise the, the grate and probably put more charcoal on it and not rely so much on the wood and focus more on radiant heat instead of uh, heat rising. So I think that would uh, speed up the process, let a little radiant heat with a more even temperature because my, uh, my temperatures were ranging all day from gosh 250 all the way up to 450 and everywhere in between. So I chased it all afternoon and now in retrospect I, I'm pretty sure that I'm just losing too much heat due to the distance from, of the protein from the fire. So that's what I'll do next time. Uh, I still like the live fire. I'll probably rely more on charcoal and let the, let the wood be secondary instead of what I did today which is change midstream and try to run all wood which is fine but you've got to deal with the flame and uh, fortunately I didn't have any flare-ups but uh, this whole day was to see if the uh, rotisserie was going to work on the firebox and I think I've proven that it'll work and it'll work fine but there is a learning curve to it uh, I had to babysit a lot more today than I had intended but that's all part of it I ended up still low and slow a chicken <laughs> so Anyway, uh, that's the proof of concept. It did work. Uh, we're going to let this rest about another 10 minutes and we're going to cut into it and see how we did. We've been resting here about 15 minutes. Let's see if it was worth the wait. First thing I need to do is loosen these up. Loosen that one up. So we can slide this whole thing out and there it goes. Let's zoom in here a little bit. There we go. Well, let's see how our thighs come out. That's what we were watching for. Back here where you can see. Look at that. Sucker is still plenty hot. I don't know if you can see or not. We got plenty of juices. Just cut this leg off. Pull that up. Can you see that? Come on, camera, focus. One of these days I'm going to get me a camera that works. not going to do it. Anyway, you can see, I hope you can see the shine. It's plenty, plenty moist. It's not overdone. I was getting a little nervous. It looked like it's falling apart. Let's check out a piece of the thigh. I'm sorry, let's check, check out a piece of the breast. Let me zoom you in here so you can see that. See that? Go ahead and cut this off. Here we go. It's got a water pocket in it. I'll try a piece of that. It's pretty hot. Let me just try a hunk. Oh, yeah, that's perfect. Flat, maybe a little dry. But the part we eat, came out excellent. I'm very pleased with that. 
Man, now I gotta tell you, it was a hot one today. But I still had a lot of fun with my little Frankenstein setup. So if you all liked what I did today, uh, hit that like button for me. If you haven't subscribed yet, why not? We'd sure appreciate it if you wanted to do that. And if you get a chance, share this video with all your friends. Thanks so much for tuning in to Grumpus on Fire. I'm Grumpus, and I'll see you next time.